morning. morning. Yeah. I think I need some TMS right now. Um, again, uh, well, it's, it's definitely an honor to be here, and this is always a humbling experience when you get to present, uh, you know, present findings, present some, some, some sort of, of uh, information to, to a group of, of uh, like-minded professionals. Um, I only have 15 minutes, so I'll get this thing going one time. So the topic is uh, functionally training the hamstrings. Um, anybody pulled a hamstring here before? We, well, if we enter into sport, um, if we enter uh, exercise and we're running, more than likely we've, we've done it at some point. Um, what I'm going to do is just ask a, you know, a yay or nay by, by raise of hands. Um, anybody think uh, the hamstring is useful for power production? Anybody? Okay. Uh, I guess the rest is, is no. Another question by raise of hands. Are we built for speed? Yes or no? Forget your horse. <laughs> Are we built for speed? This is good. This is good. Well, I was going to get to this. If we, were built, if we were built for speed, then this wouldn't happen. Nor this. Nor that. Some interesting, cute faces here. Or that. According to Hall, hamstrings are the, are the most frequently strained muscle in the human body. This is uh, some of the, some of the what, what I did, uh, I went and uh, checked uh, some of the, the, the headlines of some of the top uh, wingers in football. I'm kind of football biased because I am football. Uh, but I looked at people like Theo Walcott constantly running up and down the, 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 the wings, and he's always injured. I just want you to look up a minute at, at his, his running technique here, or his, what, this posture right here. And just, just keep it in mind what way his heel is in relation to the ground and in relation to his hip. All right, and we'll come back to that. Some other headlines you see Danny Alves, top Brazilian uh, winger. Out for 15 to 20 days. Darth Bale, always tearing his hamstring. And always have all his tape all around his, all his legs. Always injured. Some of the findings, I did a meta-analysis of, the, of, of, of from studies and found that hamstring injuries accounted for 16 to 23% um, in Australian rules rugby and football. Uh, we, we know that significant time is lost from, from competition and training based on the, the, the article headline from before. The hamstring um, re-injury possibility is very high as well. Actually, I went on uh, Birmingham City's uh, website, physioroom.com, I think, and there's a list of the amount of injuries that these guys get and, and popping up the most was obviously hamstring. After that was groin. Incidentally, when the hamstrings are weak, the groin takes over. So further research showed that hamstring injuries are found for 29% among, of, of injuries among track and field sprinters. I want to get through this quick because the meter of the thing is, uh, is lower down. In football, uh, one, stu one study sought to implement the hamstring in, uh, exercises during football training to see if the eccentric uh, exercises, eccentric is basically um, loading under a, a stretch. Um, what they found is that th there were significant differences in their training and I would say practice matches. But basically, during competition, competition period, there was no significant difference. Right? So that's, that leading to, what, what that is leading to is basically, um, apart from t training the hamstrings for strength, you also have to train 
movement um, and coordination as well to complement the strength. Neptune and others looked at heel to toe running as a subject that could be applied to their studies uh, to, for their musculoskeletal model. They did this because they found that running in both young and older uh, athletes um, produced a high injury rate and that there were an overall yearly incidence of running injuries between 37 to 56 percent, which is considerably high. You all know that guy, right? Stone John? When we look back at Theo Walcott, remember the position of the heel to the ground in relation to the hip. Same thing here. Position of the heel to the floor in relation to the hip. He has multiple knee and hamstring issues over his career. I even worked with him too, so I know. See it firsthand. So basically what he's, what he's doing there is overstriding as an excessive extension of knee angle there. And then he's going to be hitting the ground, increasing ground reaction forces to his knee joint. Increasing, well, increasing um, forces to the knee joint and also increasing his metabolic cost. Basically what he's doing is wasting energy. So, are we, I remember most of the people put up their hands for this one, eh? are we producing power or are we transferring energy with the hamstring? Raise your hands now. Are we producing power, right hand, left hand, or are we transferring energy? Left hand. Both? We get to that just now. Cool. So let's, let's, let's focus on what are biarticular muscles and functional characteristics of the hamstring. So first off, biarticular muscles are two joint muscles, which means they cross the, the, the two joints. That's basically what it is. It crosses two joints, knee and hip. And, and an example, examples of biarticular muscles are biceps, triceps, rectus femoris, gastrocs, the calves, and the hamstrings. So what we really concern about today is the hamstrings. Not that we are putting the hamstrings in an isolated state because his friends, the glutes, the quads, and the calves have to work alongside with him to create power. So the function and characteristics of, of the hamstrings. One is to resist knee extension. I'll, I'll get to that later if you don't really understand the terminology. You'll see it in a picture. Assist hip extension, transfer energy between the distal and proximal joints. And that distal and proximal joint depends on what, where, you know, if the knee is up, the leg is down, it, it depends. All depends on what, where, where the position of the, 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 um, the leg is. Um, the, the hamstring has a combination of active and passive tissue. Passive tissue is really, really important. We'll touch on that a little later on. Um, changing levers just what I talk about just now, and they have, the, the, the hamstring has a many, many degrees of freedom. I'll explain that concept as well. The degrees of freedom, according to McGill, is the number of independent elements or components in a control system and the number of ways each component can act. So we have four steering wheels there. If Toyota were to create a car with four steering wheels. Anybody would buy it? Cool. <laughs> so we have a four steering wheel car. If one person were to drive four steering wheels, or even if four people were to, let's say four people were to drive a car with four steering wheels, would that make sense? Right. So basically, what we want to do with the hamstring is to reduce the degree of freedom in the hamstring, because now, remember, we, we're moving from the hip to the knee. We have three muscles, independent of each other, and we want to get all of those working together with his friends, the glutes, the calf, the quads, right? So solving the degree of freedom problem, we have to constrain the systems many degrees of freedom to produce one specific result, which is locomotion or movement at speed. 
So in order to do this, apart from strength training, we have to practice the skill of running, practice the skill in terms of movement skill, drills, that kind of thing, uh, for the body's motor control system to solve the degrees of freedom issue. This, anybody done, does this for strength training? Any athletes in the, in, the, in the, so you do it, right? All right, so you have to stop like today. All right. So this is non-functional. Why? Because of the, one of the characteristics of the hamstring is that it, we, they have passive tissues. Passive tissues are fascia. It's the connective tissue, other connective tissue upon your OCs. And what, what's going to happen with the leg curl is you're going to disrupt the pattern of the passive tissues because the passive tissues need to elongate for the breaking action. So basically, when you're coming out, you land on the floor, you need to elongate. If you're doing hamstring curls, you're shortening the muscle, you're creating a bad, bad environment for athleticism. So if you're doing the hamstring curl now, stop today. So we go through this real quick. The hamstrings are not responsible for generating positive work. Positive work means, in, in, in other words, going forward. But directing forces generated by other muscles. The hamstrings, not the hamstrings, the glutes, the, quad, the quads, calf. Calf is also a biarticular muscle as well. The hamstrings must not be trained in isolation, but together with other muscle groups. And the leg curl is a detriment. detriment to the hamstring because it disrupts the equilibrium between the active and passive tissues and the, re uh, the regulation of elasticity. I just mentioned that just now. This is functional. So we're going back to the characteristics. What we want to do is for the knee to resist knee extension, to assist in hip extension, and where the red arrows are uh, uh, pointing there uh, are his dorsal muscles. You want that whole chain to be working together. No energy leaks anywhere along the line. So I guess some, some people think about, you know, probably refer to it as posterior chain training. But this is one exercise that is um, very, very, very useful to the athlete. What happens here is that the dorsal muscles are never allowed to relax. And the hamstring wants to resist knee extension to, to assist the hips extension, which I mentioned just now. And coordinating now, now, now is strength, strength training and coordination, is coordinating the dorsal, the gluteals, the hamstrings, and the gastrox in one. So that bang for your buck exercise. If you don't have a bench like this, you probably go onto a platform that somebody hold you, hold, you know, just press on your, on your, on your on your heel, and then your, your hip is going to come off the edge, and you lift. But before even doing this, you have to must, must have proper core function. Two minutes. Take one point. Hamstrings are meant to regulate force. They have many degrees of freedom to overcome optimal functioning. When hamstrings function optimally, an athlete can continue increasing his or her level of performance for a very long time. So how many athletes do we know pack up, you know, start to do Latin dancing because they can't compete anymore? Hamstrings are very specialized muscles, and, in, in, and as such, they need to be trained that way. And last point, don't forget the leg curl. Thank you. Thanks again, Gregory. Up next, we have Dr. Cybel Williams um, from the Department of Physics. I think one of the things that has struck me this morning is the cross-section of where people are applying their, their background and their knowledge into sport. And I think that's something that we need to take away from this week's proceedings. Dr. Williams. Hi, good morning, everyone. 
So let me just find my presentation here. How do I get this growth? much. Oops. Yeah. 